All right, welcome back to Gaming with the Hackets. Um, so I bought the parts. They're now fully installed. This is like a continuation on of the new startup video for version 2.12.115. And now I'm going to go over what you need to do to actually get those parts or those new components up and operating. So the diesel's already installed. Not a big deal. We don't care about that. Um, it's full of fuel too. So the steam generator is about to be finished. I think I've got about 10-ish minutes left. So let's look. Yep. It's counting down real quick. So we're going to go ahead and show you the new components. Boom! Steam dinner is installed. As you can see, now this whole section is available. So this is your steam generator, your turbine. So you have to buy that. Don't forget because if you do, if you don't buy it, then you won't be able to operate that loop anyways. So what we're going to do is open up all the B series valves. And that will help. Well, that'll align coolant through your Bravo loop to your steam generator loop and then your condensers are already connected. So let's go ahead and operate these valves. B1 is open. Um, yep. Let me do something real quick. I think the animation speed is slow again. Oh, nice. You can change this. House input speed animations. Okay. That way, I mean, the turning of the knob is still incredibly slow, but at least it's not as slow. Okay, these are all going to open up eventually. Okay, we got that one. Let's go Bravo 3. Yeah, there we go. And then the other ones are going to fall suit. So we'll just normalize the board, take it back to off. Doesn't mean that it's going to secure flow. That just means that um, the hydraulics are not going to be constantly engaged. Okay, so there we go. We got this whole loop operating. So now what we need to do, in order to use that steam generator, we're going to have to fill this up. And we, you can start the coolant if you want right away. It doesn't really matter. But in order to start this, we have to kick the pump on and then it's going to dial up to uh, we'll just do I'll just do 35 and then we're going to go get this coolant loop started as well start number two and that's going to come up to 49 as well okay so now it's coming up this one's coming up It'll start feeding up. Still coming up to speed. We're not even close yet. Okay, it's coming up. Condenser's a little low, so I'm going to go ahead and start that pump as well. Because we're going to draw a lot of liquid out of here, so we want this to be fuller anyways. And as this loop comes up to speed that's going to start putting heat in here and as you can see the temperature is already starting to come up and then eventually what's going to happen is it'll start making steam so like right away it's coming up coming up coming up nicely Okay, I'm going to go ahead and shut it off so I can coast. We are going to lose a little bit more water from that, but not too much. As you can see, the temperature is already coming up. So, um, another thing you can do, you can check your status page, which tells you the actual heat input into the steam generator right here. So. We got about 
20 degrees and our core is cooling down I forgot to mention that so we're gonna bump this up to 97 just so we can get this back on the positive side of the reactivity so we don't cool down too much we don't want to affect our turbines too much and as you can see we're already pretty close to the uh, actual operating capacity so yep now the second steam generator is coming up which is money okay that's a little slow so we'll come to 42 because pretty sure those two loops are very close in temperature now uh, it's actually 30 degrees more and this kind of shows you like the loops can be unbalanced so you'd have to add more flu flow through one loop than the other which honestly doesn't make sense but more heat coming in you're gonna have to raise this pump speed up and ideally at 100% you'd set everything to 100% and that would be that would be it okay so this is coming up still that's going to come up to a new steady state level which is fine we're at the end of that and then this is also speeding up still because the pressure probably is still coming up here well, it's actually going down a little bit maybe maybe not but as you add more water this will come down a smidge so um, I want to raise this actually I'm gonna go to 55 see if I can balance out these loops before we do the shutdown okay let's see status page okay so now we're right about the same 180 184 so if we come over here our steam generator should be dropping yep and then this one should be pretty close to steady yep so we'll go to 49 and then I'll bump this one up to 49 and then they'll eventually should be the same level okay and then if you want more power in your turbine you have to raise the steam generator pressure which ultimately comes on to these turbine sets which is all connected to the same generator which doesn't make sense but that's what we're going with so if you look here we're at just shy of 40 and if we look over here just shy of 40 and then 37 37 so whatever this pressure is this pressure is so to get the most efficient uh, efficiency out of your turbine you're gonna want to put these in the green and you do that by adjusting coolant flow so nothing says you can't go 100 in each loop and uh, yeah if you go 100 in each loop you should be balanced out okay so why is that going down am I losing the level or something no maybe it just sped up too much and now it's reaching steady state okay so we're operating right you sit like this for long periods of time. There's always something you could be doing, though. You've got to maintain your pressurizer heaters, right? Um, you can go around and check on different components. Like our power transformer just got installed before this, so why don't we go check that out real quick? You can do the straight run where you hold. Uh, a or D while holding shift and W and then you'll actually run a little bit faster. oh we're already on the first floor silly me and don't forget I didn't do it on my startup video but make sure you guys go around to each room and turn on your operating assistant it's free points and those are the objectives for the day if you don't do it you lose the points and I don't know if they come back at any point during the day. Looks like they fixed this, or maybe that was the issue I was having. 
this was like wobbling like crazy when it was unsteady, so I don't know if that was because my turbine was damaged. Alright, so to connect the transformers, you come into the power room, the generation room. So, well, not the generation, the distrib distribution room. So, as you can see, I got the second power transformer. So, we're going to go ahead and connect that. Now, as you can see, we have two. You have a max of three. They're all 8,500 kilowatt. Um, if you want to do anything to these resistor banks, like load them, you need to bypass them. You can do it locally on the individual one, so like this, and then you can open these. But if you don't bypass it, you'll get shocked, especially if it's like operating. I went too far. We want three and four. And it looks like maybe they got these green lights to be steady. And red light means bad. I've only ever seen it once. And I don't know if these things can just, like, disintegrate or explode or something. But yeah. Okay, we're going to go back up. Before I sign off for this video... We're going to show you, I don't know why I keep saying weird, it's literally me. I'm going to show you the resistor banks and how they actually work. So basically when you put resistance in with a load, or well it is a load, but once you put resistance in you actually decrease the output voltage of whatever component. So it eats up some of that voltage and um, turns it into heat. So just think of it as like your toaster oven or whatever. Or your toaster, your stove, if you don't have a gas stove, you have an electric stove. Like the coils on top, that's basically a giant resistor. So it's able to hold all that uh, voltage and current that's going through that and it turns it into heat so you can boil water. So that's basically what these are doing. But it's just siphoning off the excess power. Each resistor bank, I believe, let's verify, but I think it can do five, 5,000 kilowatts. Um, yeah, so standard. So we're over by 8,000. So I'd need two resistor banks. And then this is gonna uh, this is gonna take out 6,184 kilowatts of power, and then only give us 6,477. And so, when you first start doing this, there's this automatic, and then you can also do like a flat out percentage. And the more you eat up, the higher the temperature will get. So these are both sitting at 32 or 33, but if we had way more power, like more than 10,000 kilowatts that we could do, these will actually absorb the full 5,000, and then it's going to catch on fire and explode. So you don't want to go over the 5,000 per. You can actually upgrade these via this but they can't be connected to power so and you also have to be like level six seven and like ten or something for these and if you look here this last one increase absorption that's going to be your capacity and yeah you got to be level eight and it's eight hundred forty thousand five hundred prestige points now just imagine doing this on normal where you can't overpower and you have to rely on these you're going to be shutting down and replacing these things. It says every 120 hours of use, so about 9, 8 days, something like that. And uh, yeah, you're going to wear them out. And if you have too much power that you have to divert, because you got all three turbines right away, 
and you're operating the loops at like 100% flow, you're going to be kicking out some major power and you're not going to be able to keep up. And especially with one set, which is what I didn't know, I connected it immediately and then the thing literally exploded because I did, uh, I think I was up to, I had three generators and I was at 2100 kilo or 21,000 kilowatts and I only had to do like eight so it way overloaded that first resistor bank and it exploded and if you look here with the second power transformer we're able to transmit 17,000 kilowatts and if we get a third one that's another 8,500 kilowatts and those you can also upgrade so Everything you can upgrade is through here. Um, circ pumps you can do easy. You do power increase and they'll generate more flow. Uh, consumption reduction, self-explanatory. It's gonna lower the consumption. And then the resistance increase, which is on pretty much every component. That just means like how less likely it is to wear. So if this is maxed out, you'll probably have a reduction of like 50% wear. So these do add up, but these ones are expensive. These two are pretty cheap, respectively. So 56, but then if you look at the power increase, it's only 2,500. So you might as well max those out. Really easy. But when it comes to like other things, like the resistor bank, those are super expensive. Power transformers are super expensive. The turbine stuff is like super expensive. So. And this, like level 10, I just reached probably like level 12. And I only had 6, six million points. And I don't even think I could fully upgrade it. But yeah. Um, it has to be off, so you got to do it during a maintenance shutdown. And then also can't be damaged and then you're gonna have to increase your power transformers in tandem so if you do one level here you should probably do one level ideally on each which is a lot so keep that in mind when you're upgrading things all right so let's actually get into the shutdown that I'll, now that I've done 17 minutes of talking okay so there's a checklist via your AO and it says insert control rods to 100 have your condenser freight pump going remove the fuel block which I've never successfully been to do and then this is just saying stuff that is already ready for like steady state operations aside from your steam generator level too high but we're not worried about that right now so we're going to scram the reactor, and then I'm going to bump these up to fast speed. That's going to start cooling down this. These pressurizer heaters need to go on high because you're going to pull out too much heat. Pressurizer will cool down, your pressure will drop, and then all of a sudden, guess what's going to happen? You're going to avoid the core. Alright, so a couple things we got to keep an eye on we got to keep an eye on to our steam air levels because those are going to start going up as you pull out heat um, yeah this is coming way too high so we're going to actually bump this down to medium I think okay we're going to turn them to low Okay, now we're cooling down, and we're going to keep an eye on our turbine, we're already at, oh, see, see, that's what I'm talking about. Oh god. Warning, danger alarm. Yeah, the resistor banks were overloaded. I bet if I go down there, they're going to be on fire. So, that's why I say, if you're on easy mode, Honestly, don't even worry about it. Oh, 
and then we need to put this condenser up in fast. Because that's actually what's going to pull out more heat from the primary. So now that it's on fast, that's going to start going down a lot faster. We're really high on our pressure still, but I want to keep that on for right now. As you see, it's coming down. And now I'm going to fast forward. And there goes the resistor banks. They just exploded. Okay, so now we're at 180. Let's check our... That's coming down a lot. So we're going to get ready. Because we want to break parallel. Okay, well... Forgot that. There goes the other resistor bank. So now both my resistor banks just exploded. Okay, I put it back in fast. Let's check our generators. Okay, they're now way too high, so we'll go slow. We're probably actually down to like uh, 5%. Now they're kind of shooting down. But we are cooling down, so... And now the turbine is spinning back up. <laughs> but as you can see, the pressure is going down now. Which means we've now cooled down the reactor such that no more heat is really being generated. 100 degrees is way too cold to boil water in the generator. We won't even get that much. I'm going to turn this back up to medium because now the cooldown is way too high for the pressurizer heaters to keep up. Let's take a look at our generator. Okay, so we're going to unparallel LA 1200. And you're just going to open the breaker. Oh, also I'm just going to do it early. Don't forget, like I did, you want to tell them that you're doing a maintenance shutdown. And that will remove all this power from the bus. But as long as you're not parallel, then you shouldn't have to worry about if you didn't request a shutdown. Okay, this condenser pump needs to go off because it's probably hydroed and I don't want to have it keep going. So yeah maxed out these are coming up a little bit as you can see they're not even fluctuating so we're just going to go ahead and stop the pumps there goes our generators they're kicking on you can see how long it takes for one to start up vice two you'll see two kick on before it because that's only a four minute we're actually on our batteries right now we're almost at the max capacity so as soon as that kicks on, we'll be generating 2400 kilowatts of power, which is enough to maintain all the loads. So there you go. Two is already on, and one is still starting. And it takes forever. Eight minutes. Probably one more minute, and then it'll turn on. Okay, maybe two minutes. Okay, maybe three minutes. Either way, doesn't matter. Okay, doesn't matter about the pressurizer heaters, we can turn those off. We're sufficiently cool that it doesn't matter. We've now lost our critical mass, which is that noise. Okay, they're going to stop sending. No longer reactive. And now we are, well, we're still connected to the city power but that's gonna come off soon okay those are petered out we can go ahead and turn this off we don't need that anymore and we're still cooling down this reactor nice and slow just turn this back on to max speed Yep. And then 
In reality, we could probably stop the condenser pump right now. It is cool enough. And this is gonna lower down. Uh, if we had the third pump, it would be even faster with the steam generator, but I couldn't order it, like I said, so we're just gonna leave that at that. Alright, well, that's the shutdown. And now you can go into a maintenance period. So you can send your little robot out to do a maintenance I'm analysis. Going to start with the analysis of the situation at the plant. It takes like about an hour, I think. So, yep. And once that comes back, you can select all your maintenance needs. I would bundle them all together. Otherwise, you have to wait individually, and the reactor, like maintenance is a lot faster when you do when you do it all together because it just bundles all the time and the time goes by a lot faster than even the third time loop or time increase so you can check his progress here on the third speed up it goes pretty quick I think you can also we might be able to do no Non-reactive state. Well, it's not in a reactive state. Established. Shut down mode. So let's see. What was I doing? This one. Nope. Okay, well. It's not in a reactive state, so I don't know why it's not letting me. There's also no active alarms. Now we're going to turn our operator. Maintenance report is complete. Now you can check it from your tablet. So it takes about an hour to actually do the maintenance report. And then I like to turn these off. I mean, you don't have to. The reactor port cool. But it will save on fuel. And then you can see what happened in your playthrough for that time period. And then if you want to do maintenance tasks, come to your AO and then start maintenance tasks. You literally just select them all. And if you're going to see resistor bank total reconstruction costs 225,000 a piece. And that's because I wasn't paying attention and they exploded. And then transformer, you have to go back and physically disconnect in order to even do it, but I'm not going to worry about that. Oops. Maximum of five tasks per session, so they also nerf this apparently. Hmm, interesting. Start with but you'll see the little animation will turn this on and end the video. So. Able to respond to your command. That's the animation. As you can see, time goes pretty quick. It's a lot faster than uh, time speed up for the third level. And it's only available if you have a reactor component with it. So, there you go. And then you just go through and Keep selecting all these and get them all done. All right, with that, that's the shutdown into a little maintenance period. Uh, if you guys got any questions, leave it in a comment. I'll try to answer it. If you want more videos like this or different aspects of the game, you can also leave that in a comment. Um, let me know what you guys think. Uh, thumbs up it if you liked it. Um, if you've got some constructive criticism, please leave it. I appreciate any help. This is my second video that will be, actually this will be the fourth video I'd post, so um, yeah, I'm brand new to this, I know I need a mic, I've already tried to use two different headphones and originally one of them sounded pretty good, but then when I went back, um, audio quality was pretty poor, so anyways, thanks for watching and uh, appreciate it. Keep up, you know, 
playing the Nuclearis. It's pretty fun. And if you got questions, you can always come to me. You can watch these videos if you need a refresher on how to do this stuff or even figure out the new operation with the uh, Synchroscope. Any new features that get added, I'll also make new videos for those as well. So, once again, I appreciate you guys watching this. Don't forget to hit subscribe and like button and all that good stuff. And uh, I'm going to sign off. So, have a good night, guys. Thanks. Bye.